Hi friends! Oh Theo, your hair! Ooh, I love it! It's <laughs> crazy so post holiday. Crazy post holiday, <laughs> big hair! Ines is here, Courtney is here, I see Erika, Hila, Ravi, Natalia, Charla is here, Stefan is joining. Cool, cool, cool! Welcome everyone, settle in! Um, already know that you have full control of the music slider if it's too wild on your end right uh i am super excited for today's session because it's going to be a bit more loose like fun a bit more experimental we're talking about metaphors so my checking question to y'all is are you already using metaphors in your facilitation practice is it a yes is it a no or a complicated i'll tell you more later maybe you drop what you, you you explain the complication in the chat yes but uh, it's an artsy session erica we need just some pens and some paper nothing really fancy just have something to write at hand pen paper um because uh yeah i i don't know what we're doing but i i'm sure she's going to tell us in a moment um Beautiful. So while we wait for everyone to join, um, find the chat to the left side of the screen. That's a tiny chat icon. And do let us know where are you tuning in from and maybe what do you do for work? Are you a facilitator, your trainer, an educator, a consultant, a coach, learning a development professional? Who are you? Drop that, drop that in the chat. And while everyone's doing that, I'm going to kill the music here. Um, the session is being recorded. Um, I think the majority of us know that we're making our sessions always available for free for the world to see so we can all learn from each other and improve our facilitation skills. My name is Anna Maria. I'm leading the Boto Community Project and I am uh, very happy to have Harshit with us today for today's Boto Mixer. And what makes this session so special is the fact that Harshit is an artist and creative facilitator and community builder. I really like that combination that he brings. Um, he's bringing communities together for meaningful and wholesome conversation. He often uses art and drama and movement-based activities to engage his gathering, uh, his gatherings participants in an interactive way. He is currently heading the community for Web Engage, which is a global sauce player in marketing automation. Um, and so, Harshit, thank you so much for joining us today. Remember that you're on mute. <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we see a lot of facilitators are in the room, l and consultant, um, facilitator. We've got Brooklyn, Lisbon. Customer success manager, LD consultant, India. Cool. Beautiful. Awesome. I think I think no surprises there, right? We 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 expect it to be surrounded by by our peers. And as you can tell, we are kind of like somewhere. Uh, some of us are using metaphors, others are not. I admit I don't use it very intentional. So I'm very excited to see what takeaways we were learning from you today. Um and for some of us, the relationship is complicated. Okay, I'm taking the slides away. Thank you for checking in, right. everyone. And Harshit, the floor is yours. Take it All away. Right. Super. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, joining in. Thank you for taking time for this. I am seeing everybody's a new face for me, except for Anna Maria. So super, super, super looking forward to connecting with all of you. Um, we will get to my introduction, but before we get started, I want all of you to make sure you have some water to have during the session. You have a rough paper, probably some markers, some pens, because as I said, I use art sometimes in my facilitation. And I'd love to get you to have a flavor of that. So give me a thumbs up if that's something that you already have. Do you have all of these things ready? All right, cool. Let's get started. Um, as an artist, I like to use uh, body movement and drama also as a part of my facilitation. Um, just to be sure, because I'm I'm seeing a lot of diverse people, are you being able to catch up with my speed, with my pronunciations, or should I slow down? Should I go faster? Is that all right? Okay, perfect, super. Um, okay, cool. There I am. 
Um, a bit bigger. <laughs> All right, cool. So before we get started, here's, here's, here's an activity which I call drop your bags. So I don't know what time is it for you, what all you're carrying, but just by the nature of all the things, all the tabs that we have in our head open, I want you to physically remove any and all baggage that you might be carrying. So just shake off anything that's you know stuck on you, probably a meeting from before, maybe something somebody said. Just see if there's something else that you're carrying unintentionally on your body. Just, just let go of all of those things. <sighs> all right, yes. And I usually like to do some movement because I think a lot of great ideas lie in our unmoved body parts. So you can do that for yourself. I love that. I love that. I wish I could see your names so that I could, I could probably read it out when I mention, but I see a lot of movement and I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, here's the, here's the next thing. Have you seen a child run in a park and come back? Yeah, maybe. All right. Cool. So... I want you to behave like the child who's really tired, had a really good run. So just take a deep breath in and just let it out. Just breathe it all out. All right. And I think I saw it in another uh, session. I think it was also from the butter community. But I thought starting with something silly really makes it engaging, really makes you want to open up those creative things. So I want you to unmute yourself. Everybody, just unmute yourself. Yeah, we like yeah, sleep. Yeah. All right. So I want you to repeat. <laughs> all right. All right. Super. With that, with that behind us, I would love to dive into the next segment, which happens to be. A start with a metaphor, right? So as I mentioned, we will be doing a lot of metaphors and I will, given that a lot of you are facilitators, trainers and coaches, uh, almost everything that we do is also in an intent to allow you to use something like that in your own session. So if you have a question, you can always ask that to me. Um, and here's how I want you to think. The reason I work with metaphors is because I feel uh, okay, I, I'll reveal that as a secret later. But first, I want you to do a check in as to how are you feeling, all right? And I want you to imagine that if you were a balloon. So if you were a balloon, which one of them do you relate the most? Are you like this solo, siloed balloon, hot air balloon in one corner? Are you pretending to be happy, but you're actually very deflated? Are you one of those balloons who has to change a lot of shapes? Are you this very enthusiastic balloon who out of enthusiasm got stuck somewhere and just hoping to be rescued? Just make sense of some of these images and yeah, just um, <laughs> surprisingly a lot of people becoming the bubbles to be bursted <laughs> by a kid at a fair. I usually relate a lot to this one myself, um, which was, I think, which was the uh, birth of this prompt when I felt like this and I shared about how I felt like this balloon who does not have an identity of its own right now and whatever parts of my life, so be it my family, be it my relationship, be it my work, I'm just getting into a form that is expected out of me. And then people share other versions of it and that's how um, that's how this came love. Thank you so much, Courtney. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. All right. So yeah, um, we have a check-in. I love that there's one of us who's at least uh, feeling like this one strong balloon has got it all together. Um, I see uh, Courtney is right at the center. Like sometimes I'm deflated and sometimes I'm, you know, like I'm stuck. There's no in between. <laughs> superb, superb. I see that's the interesting thing about metaphors that uh, I thought there are six, right? But some of you found intermediates. Like I, I, I see somebody's right at the, you know, at the junction point of four of them, and that's that's a beautiful way to interpret the prompt. Thank you so much. All right, uh, here's a question just to enable you to probably do something like this of a check-in with your um, with your folks. Um, do you think there is a question or a metaphor like this that you could take in your sessions? It's okay if we don't have the context, just in your chat, drop. I would ask about X by using a metaphor of Y. You don't have to make it perfect, just give it a shot. <laughs> Good to know, Erica. 
just going to open to the chat to hear out some examples. Let me repeat my question. If you had to make a flashcard of this order, what would be a question that you would ask? And what might be a metaphor or what might be an object or a visual that you would use? OK, several of you are typing. I'll just let you have your moment. Which vegetable do you feel like today? I would ask about confidence with the materials by using different faces. All right. But I'm guessing that something related education where material means what they have to present or talk about. Um, not necessarily education, but just like whatever topic we're covering, whether that's like strategy or goal setting, like what are you coming in with? Like what level right. of like, oh, I All feel right. very like comfortable in this Got it. topic Got or not. So your confidence level with about whatever, with using different faces. Talk about energy using the moon phases. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. I, I've often seen a very interestingly, um, I, I let some of this come, but very interestingly, something I've seen across my sessions, uh, people love using parts of nature because just by the design of it, we see so much of nature day in and day out without maybe not so intentionally, but then we've all seen it, we've all felt it. So um, the moon, the sun, the sea are such common metaphors that people are able to express themselves using. So yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing. Clouds, weather, superb. <laughs> what kind of potato? Potato. <laughs> all right, I love that. I love to be a French fry. Everybody loves French fry. Super. Thank you so much. I think uh, we could move to the next one. Brilliant, uh, brilliant examples. Would love to take back some of them. Um, I, I'll just uh, maybe some of you can let's let's just answer one of these. All right. Uh, I'd love to go with the veggie one. Um, if this, oh no, just if you have to express yourself as to how you're feeling in the moment, what vegetable would that be? You could probably give it a subline also as to why. Do we put it in the chat? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can use zip, that's right. That is because I'm feeling fresh. Even I felt broccoli. All right, spinach. I'm guessing that's for energy, given the GIF. <laughs> All right, you got company. Super. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, All right, we have a couple of folks who want to read onions today. All right, super. Let's let's go to the next. Uh, let's go to the next segment, um, where I. Now that we've experienced some of what I do, I'd love to share certain stories from my journey, um, certain instances, certain references, certain examples. Let me just quickly pull up these slides. Um, till 8.23, I did not have these slides. I was just telling Anna Maria that, you know, I could not, but I just felt I want to do this. Um, what? So about... <laughs> you put this in the last minute. Go, Harshay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, like, because I think visual being the theme, I just knew I had to show you. Um, so this is some of the work that I do. I am an artist. I've always been an artist. And um, eventually I started working with the preschool and I was working as an artist in residence with zero to two years old. And I realized I, you know, how they will draw something, they will squiggle something and say, this is my mom. And then squiggle something else and say, this is my house, which is when I realized that art is not the product. It's, it's, it's the language of expression. And uh, ever since I've been doing a lot of uh, facilitation using art, um, I got the chance to work with some dance movement therapy facilitators and some art based therapy facilitators from whom I picked some of the traits that I do, a flavor of the things that I do. Um, and eventually I started doing these for brands in festivals like, uh, I'm not sure if you know of Sunburn, but that's a festival, like a music festival, which we have here in India. So something like a Burning Man, but much, much smaller. So I started doing these for audiences in different festivals. I started doing these for corporates, for team building, for alignment and leadership activities and so on. Um, my, my heart goes out to, um, uh, my heart goes out to working with metaphors and I've, I've worked with a variety of them. Um, one of my very favorite, I'm not sure 
uh, can I zoom in and will it zoom in for everybody or would it zoom just for no, you? No, just for All you. Right, no worries. Um, if you could just probably zoom into this little girl in the first slide. Um, I, I'll still keep talking, but uh, this is from one of the festivals that I did where uh, we had like a conversations with the universe booth and we had like different theme cards folded and clipped on and you could just walk up to any card and it had a prompt for you with a metaphor. All right, and this little kid uh, held the card. If your family was a bowl of salad, what would go inside it, right? And she draws her brother to be um, tomatoes because he's tangy and he's naughty, and uh, his mom to be green and leafy because she takes after her health. And I think that's, uh, I'm not sure what she do, but just to understand, like, and, and she asks, what does that mean? And she's like, what, about four or five years old, probably. But just this prompt, given that salad is probably something that by five you've eaten enough, she knew what she wanted to represent and suddenly she knew what to allocate to each of those folks. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a memory which is very close to my heart. Um, talking about uh, the rest of the prompts, uh, the second one, if you see, is a tree. And you see this small little tree, it's actually a, it's, it's a snake coming towards the tree. And uh, this example is from a corporate uh, session, which was around New Year's this year, when the, the, the folks called me to get their teams to align as to what should be the vision for the next year. And we use the metaphor of a tree. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, we use the metaphor of a tree and the, uh, the team expressed uh, a snake to show their competition and how uh, if they keep growing high enough, the tree can then not come after, like the, the, the snake can then not come after them. And then different parts here are different parts of the, the things that the team wants to move towards so that they become a really strong business. If you see the third one, this is again from a festival. I, I love going to uh, these community places. So this is from a Christmas carnival and uh, you can see a lot of Christmas caroling in the background. Uh, and the prompt, I uh, so I usually like to have a one-on-one -on -one theme conversation. And she gave me the theme, which is transitioning. That she's just feeling that she's continuously in transition. Uh, so I gave her uh, something very, something that we've done enough after the age, which has taken a lot of flights. And uh, that's what I gave as a metaphor that if you could show what different phases of your transition look like as different parts of flight. So in the first, you can see some turbulence, then there's some calmness when you get to see the clouds and so on and so forth, right? And this can, again, this is very contextual. You can go and do this on a, on a beach city and talk about, uh, in the same event for that matter, uh, there's this couple who's planning to get married and they came to me as a couple to what to do a prompt. And just like, I gave them eight different things. Your first kiss, a date night, uh, Sometimes when you're having an, an, an argument and I gave them about eight such topics and I just asked them what would different parts of the, like how would different phases of the sea, because this was in Bombay, which happens to be very close to the sea. So people, so they expressed different parts of their relationship, different instances as phases of the sea. Um, and the last one is something uh, which I love a lot, which is I wrote a monologue about how love is like a cake and, um, uh, the whole monologue is about how, you know, like you can like, it only stays fresh for so long. And so you have to keep baking it again and again. So you can't take it for granted. Uh, and everybody could have their own recipe and every cake can be different and all of those things. I'll be happy to share this artwork separately with the community here. Um, and then there are these different layers of what, uh, what makes up the layers of the cake for me. So for me, there's commitment, honesty, compassion, respect, intimacy, and two more words, which I don't remember um, now from, from, from what I see. But uh, right behind this card, I also have an empty cake for whoever buys this artwork of me to make their own cake. So all, all so a lot of metaphors that I end up doing, I convert them into these DIY kits for people to fill for themselves. So yeah, that's, that's my work with metaphors. Um, I, I obsess, I love, I'd love to write a book about metaphors someday. I keep thinking about them. I hopefully get to do it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about the journey. Happy to answer any questions or anything particular you might want to know a little bit more about. 
Anything you'd like to know more about? Or would you like me to proceed? Thank you. I just read the comment. Thank you. All right. A little about the cake and the couple metaphor. Um, so um, just just what I said. I so um, there's this artwork. There's this artist called Timothy Goodman. I'm not sure if a lot of people know about them. Um, and this is another artist called Britcher, who does a lot of visual um, expression of feelings. Um, so. And Timothy Goodman's style is very like he writes one big uh, monologue without a full stop. And it's beautiful. It's it's just beautiful the way he illustrates it. So I picked up that style and I started writing a lot of monologues. For example, I also have a monologue about kitchen. How um, um, and I'll come back to the cake. I promise. Uh, how uh, how cooking is super cathartic for me in the sense like and and sure cooking is cathartic and a lot of people are able to relate to that. But just different. Uh, metaphors of the cooking process as to what the chopping allows me to do uh, and all of that. So in the cake metaphor specifically, um, I wrote about um, the details of a cake, right? Like the the consumption of it, the, the layers of it, the process of making it, the ingredients of it, which is something which we will delve deeper as we go towards the agenda where I have a prompt garage where I tell you how do I come up with prompts. Uh, but yeah, usually I just pick up something which has enough layers for me to add depth to the detail, add more detail to the thing that I'm talking about. That couple happens to be a very good friend of mine to whom I gifted that kit so that once they read it, they get to attempt and make their own, um, make, their, make their own version of the cake. Awesome. I will take a breather and I'll take a sip of water. All right, moving on. Thank you. Thank you for all the stuff. Um, all right, it's time for an activity. It's a small segment in itself, which is called dots to doodles. So this is the time where you take out your piece of paper and probably a marker. Um, and as the, as the name suggests, we'll go from dots to doodles, all right? So here's how I usually go about this. I give you a feeling or a sentiment and I give you a shape like a circle or a square or a, a triangle. And you have to very in a rapid fire format, uh, attempt to express that feeling using that shape. For example, if I had to just and give it a shot, I, I, I don't wish to share uh, an example visually. Um, but for example, if I had to let you express empathy, the word empathy, the feeling empathy, using circles only. All right. So that's a prompt. So think of your page as like a small scratch pad and just do multiple versions of whatever comes to you. And I'll play some music at the back and I'll keep pausing it and giving you new prompts every minute or so. Have you all understood? Are we all good? Love your own music. Optimum so that you listen to the music, but also to me. Question, Harshit? Yes. Do, do we have a pro so is it empathy and circles? Sorry. Yes, yes that's, the, oh, okay, that's okay. the first one. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm sorry if that was not clear. I thought I was an example, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, okay. okay. Let's give it a shot.
I want you to visualize the word support using triangles only. Support using triangles. I'll also drop it in the chat. I want you to express the word fear using squares only. I want you to express the word grief using dots only. I want you to express the word in, in a shape of your choice. What was the last word? A breathe. Okay, thank you. Can I help you with something? You caught me typing. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, not so much help, but I, yeah, I was just writing that I, this is so much fun uh, that for oh, me okay. to connect with the activity because I'm also very artsy, but I'm curious okay. how it might be for someone that's not artsy. Super, super. Thank you so much for bringing that question. It's uh, it's something which I had to promote so much because I used to run an art journaling course. And the first question that would people say is, um, but I'm not an artist, so should I do it? Um, so a little story on that, and then I'll also answer your question. Uh, a story slash very feelsy answer to that is that uh, we're all artists. We're all, we're, it's, it's a very natural language. It comes very intuitively at most times. Um, Usually, some of the things I try to do at the very start is um, I 
so it, it's a part of conditioning you're right i condition my participants in a place where they know that they can do something like this um, so how i do that is i usually ask uh, how many of you in the room are artists and only so many of them will raise their hand and i say okay wrong answer because all of you are artists so i want all of you to now repeat that we're all artists so that's how i usually begin my sessions um, the second is that this is one line which i read and then rewrote somewhere yes we'll we'll get to that uh, and yes, we'll just get to that, uh, which is that you're not a noun, you're a verb. So nobody's an artist. Some of us make art. Nobody's a poet. Some of us write poems. Um, so that's the more uh, wholesome answer that I've started living with. Um, and the third is uh, just get them to do something really silly at the start. If you would have read uh, the description of the event of this webinar that I shared was to share five uh, icebreakers with you. I'll give you two of them right now, which allow people to break that. Uh, one of them is blah, 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 of course, but uh, from more visual uh, getting art made point of view, one thing I uh, like getting done, it's a very basic childhood thing. Actually, I'll give you three of them right away. Uh, one is I ask them to close their eyes and add a lot of dots all over the page, okay, in 30 seconds, okay? And when they open their eyes, I ask them to make something just by connecting those dots. And that's something we've done all our childhood, right? Or we've seen books, but now they're not numbers. You can make whatever. And people end up actually doing it, right? So that's activity one. Activity two is I usually get them, again, to do something really silly, which is I say, uh, and I have these jokes, which I know will always work. So I have my scripts ready to make this always work. But I say, OK, um, I will okay have your pen and your paper ready, and I'll give you some instructions that you have to now follow. Uh, don't worry i'll not ask you to put your pen up your nose or something like that and then i just then i just say okay close your eyes and make a self-portrait and it is hilarious like it is and before this activity i always get them to unmute so that the moment they open the uh, their eyes and just look at the artwork entire room is laughing and uh, something i used to do back in zoom is that by the time people open their eyes i put myself in that background with the fire burning which says it's fine right uh, the, the idea of that is that, you know, um, you just need to know that it's okay to put out art uh, that is not picture perfect. I think that's the only thing that is important after that everybody's on the same page. Um, so yeah, that's that's another one. So yeah, uh, the third activity, uh, which you can get to do with your participants to get into that zone, is that I get all of my participants to write their name in full, in like capital. So let's say, um, Erica, if I had to write I-R-E-C, I R E C K A, whatever. Sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't remember the spelling. But um, what I'll do is okay, show me your names, and then everybody shows their name. And I'm like, but that doesn't tell me anything about you, Erica, right? So, what I want you to do is be a child, draw a flower if you love a flower, draw a cat if you love a cat, make the tea into a tree if you love a tree. And so, in the next five minutes, their names are so vibrant, so expressive of who they are. And that's the thing. It's easiest to talk about yourself, even if it's not so easy to maybe talk about something else or draw about something else, right? So I think some of these activities have allowed me to break that barrier in people's head. The other thing is I will never go ahead and appreciate somebody so much separately if their art is more visual and, you know, like more fine, because that's not the space. This is not a fine art space. Um, so I will never say, oh, this is so beautiful and, you know, probably not something like that to the other participants. So those are some extra sensitive things to remember as a facilitator when using art. The first one is dots, eyes close and dots. The second activity is close your eyes and draw a self-portrait. And it looks so cute. Your eyes are somewhere and then your hair is somewhere because you don't know where you left the marker. Um, yeah, okay, I'll do it again. I'll just type that. Again, and the third one is write your name and then express it. But don't say this activity all together. I always build up my activities and that allows people to open up part by part. Okay, um, I would love to see some of the images that we've created. Um, Anna Maria, can you, could you please possibly, yeah, okay, maybe you can just screen share and we can see some of yours. Um, can we uh, show them to the camera? Yeah, but I'd love to probably also like spotlight some of you and see it. Okay, some of you are sending it on the group itself. If, if that's easy for everybody, I think that that would be good. Um, wait. Oh, like Terry that's... took a digital drawing. I like yeah, that. Even I, and because I realized I did not prepare 
finally when i ended up doing digital um super breathe oh wow. okay i see the breathe in breathe out right um how do i how do i spotlight somebody who do you want to spotlight when i, I say spotlight them just just one by one a couple of people i think just okay. to see what all we've made all right theo your first one is empathy and is it empathy like a chain is is it like a cycles chain it's it's kind of like two circles that sort of get into this joint system through little mini circles. particles of themselves that morph into the other <laughs> like that all right all right <laughs> super thank you i see your support <laughs> I see fear. Can you talk about the fear one a little? Uh, yeah, my my idea with the fear is like there's a tiny, tiny square there that's very overwhelmed yeah. by this big, scary square here. Mm. All right. And it's like, ooh, very overwhelming. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, maybe we can go to somebody else. Uh, we can all look at the chat as well. I'll just, uh, Natalia, do you want to talk about your um, about your prompt, I'm looking at it, and I think the others can too. Empathy with circles. Support trying. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, about anyone <laughs> or yeah, about just, all of them? Yeah. Probably the uh, one that you felt. Oh, I did not know. I was feeling like that. Like something that's probably insightful for you. Okay, I think. Uh, support with triangles, I love to do because uh, depending on uh, the position, you can like uh, the triangle. Got it. Uh, yeah, it, they, it gives support to another one. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and the grief, I thought about a timeline. So with time, uh, it becomes like it. smaller, so uh, it. Uh, less dots. So yeah, Super. I think those. Thank you for sharing. Um, maybe I mean, really could just spend a moment or so looking at each other's prompts, each other's expression. I'm sure you will find uh, some ways where you'll relate with somebody. Like that's the beauty of uh, most of my art-based sessions. I make sure that we have enough time to share uh, because I think sometimes you end up finding perspective because somebody has made it so differently. And the other times you end up finding company because somebody has made it just the way you thought of it. So it's, it's both ways, it's a win-win. Um, I wish we had so much more time. <laughs> I think that's that's always the one thing. Um, super. Uh, I, I, I would love to hear more and I, I wish we could spend a lot more time, but I, in, the, in the interest of time, I'd also like to move forward with the next activity. But yeah, that was um, that was a small representation of with very little uh, with very little skill how we can enable a lot of a lot of expression. And um, again, I think you can apply it to any scenario just by changing the theme, right? Uh, or you could probably add timestamps. You know, something like imagine asking your employee as to um, just using circles, show how you explain like somebody who's joined and it's their first month anniversary, just ask them to make up before or after, um, how you felt, uh, on, on your day one versus how you feel today, but just use circles and spirals. And while it may not say right away, but once they do it and you ask them, they'll have so much more to share because, um, when we try to think in words, the vocabulary is so much, the moment you add this weird, undefinedly infinite dimension of, you know, art and visuals, there's so much more that starts surfacing. Um, so yeah, uh, that's about that prompt. <sighs> Coming to the next section, just shout out to Butter for the platform that it is that always reminds you to be on time. Thanks. Uh, I'm so glad I'm doing it here. Otherwise, a person might like me can just get carried away. Uh, all right. Um, talking about the prompt garage, which is how do I design my prompts? Um, so I'll give you a small one and then like a small, um, sneak peek of my process. 
and then uh, we get into the DIY garage where you talk about <laughs> where you talk about your where you will get to design your own prompts. All right. Um, so I I got to like last week is it's it's a session which is manifesting for about a year and a half now. I got to do a well-being session for the team of Spotify India. And um, how many of you know about Spotify? Yeah. All right. Okay. Super. And uh, it was actually one of the first companies who was very open to talk about any mental health issues or any anything fairly advanced in mental health because most corporates try to keep it like very a fun, hearty, chill session so that nobody talks about the feelings. Um, but yeah, uh, gladly uh, with Spotify that was not the case. And um, they wanted us to explore the theme of boundaries. All right. And um, so. This is how I went about it, okay? And this is how I usually go about it, which is I first define the intent. We want people to talk about their boundaries, like, or their relationship with different boundaries. And one of the other few questions is something which I think as all facilitators, we need to understand. And I'm sure all of you have a process for that is, is it something which is going to be a self uh, reflection or is it something which is going to be a presentable or something like a group activity that define that slightly changes the kind of prompt you would do and the time constraints and all of that but more from a metaphorical point of view so I'll be, okay we're talking about boundaries um so i thought about where all do we have boundaries so you realize okay there are multiple places where you have boundaries you have boundaries at work you have boundaries with yourself so you understand how much variety do you need in in the in designing the metaphor um, versus some things may not need a lot of variety. They can need variations. And when I say the difference between variations and variety is one thing could be shades of yellow and the other thing could be the entire color palette, right? So you need to understand, is it something which will have shades or is it something which will have its own entire palette and that palette can look different for everybody else, right? Um, so that's an initial thing where I realized that, okay, this prompt, which is boundaries, is going to have its own very wild palette. And um, then you probably just think about, okay, how wide will they go then, right? And I realize boundaries can be from very, very non-existent to really, really strong. Uh, and people could have really strong emotions about it. And um, usually I try to find, uh, so, so that's like, if we're counting step, that's probably step two. Um, so intent. Second, you define if it has variations or if it has uh, um, like if it has hues or if it has like very strong different uh, palettes. Um, the third is um, the width and like how far can they go and how extreme can these uh, variations go. Um, the fourth I usually uh, do is so I my my hypothesis is that um, like why I feel metaphors work is that. We are visual learners all our life. We've seen a lot of things uh, and we have uh, flavors of that in our, like our mind has processed them in so many ways that we don't always consciously know. There's a reason even poets make so many metaphors, right? Because uncon they are the people who will obsess and, you know, go to that extent of, you know, really opening out a metaphor. But we've all felt it. That's the reason even if you're not a poet per se, you're able to understand all metaphors that these poets make, right? Because you get it. You just didn't write it, but you get it. You get all those details. So which means in your body that exists. So I, I, I usually try to find something that's fairly relatable in the kind of boundary conditions that we've established so far, right? Uh, which is how much detail and depth. A bonus, if you can find something which is very physical, very, um, like it's not a thought, um, but it's very physical and has had like a lot of, um, like we've all interacted with enough. And if it's very one-to-one -one relatable, for example, uh, in the case of boundaries, uh, am I making sense so far? Are you really attuned or are you like, what is this guy saying? <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll take the I'll take the first one and keep continuing. Um, so. With, with boundaries, I realized boundaries is also a very physical word, right? Like there is a boundary of your house. There is a boundary of your school, of your park. Everything has a boundary, right? Uh, like, oh, interesting. We could just take that. But okay, boundaries can be made of different materials, right? Maybe a boundary 
and and that's where it started for me right like and for me i was like okay how would i and i usually try to do the prompt for myself if it makes sense if it has enough variations um like an ab testing if there are any marketers in the house um so yeah so i like okay how would my boundaries with my parents look like i was like <laughs> probably tmi but i like for me i really have to enforce a boundary at my home otherwise it's very easy to let go or you know like not respect it or not adhere to it and for me uh, do you understand what's a barbed wire yeah so i like okay that's the kind of boundary i'll probably use with my parents because it has to be very visual that this will hurt if you try to offend this and um, yeah that's that's about it like okay that's my boundary with my parents and like okay what will my boundary look like with my partner and i realized that my partner is fairly accommodative of my boundaries there is a lot of respect so i can also be a little flexible about it like i don't have to hold it so strong that you know if it like that very easily i feel uh, offended by not being respected i think there's a little margin there there's a little room to flex it out and that's why like oh that sounds like a rubber band right a rubber band will hold you till a certain distance then sort of push you back and uh, that applies both ways you're trying to expand my boundaries too much either way right and uh, that's the way it sort of happened and the prompt that i delivered to the folks was that uh, imagine you're going to a hardware store that's what it's called here where you get all sort of construction material so imagine you're going to a hardware store what would be the materials you'd pick to build boundaries for a b c d e and f like i delivered that one by one i explained the concept and i gave them six prompts eventually to fill a grid of six uh, but yeah that that was the journey of that prompt and while i am running over time for this prompt i know i saved a couple of minutes behind and i want to talk about um, two two prompts that came sorry two expressions that came out from the people in the room um one was somebody who talked about their work life boundary as as lego blocks which meant that they are fairly uh, like they're fairly rigid once they are set but then there's a lot of room to rearrange it to recreate it because they're like if on a wednesday i want to step out for a 3 hour walk because i don't feel my most productive i am okay doing that work later on a saturday if that even means missing a socials with my friends because my boundaries are fairly like collage or like they're very constructible and deconstructible as per my convenience there's not a imposed boundary it's a created balance boundary so there's one that really stayed with me the other which i cannot go like i would probably write my book with this as the first one which was uh, this is this is a man who is 52 years old um and uh, and this was the last prompt of the six which was that do like so i gave five five ones from mine and i gave sixth to do it where you feel that you're facing a lot of difficulty in that boundary yourself so you could pick whatever like the way i gave you here as any shape there i gave them the freedom to pick any relationship to do this boundary activity and this 52 year 52 year old man drew a boundary and discussed about the theme of his boundaries with his son all right and what he did is he made a sliding door with him on one side and the son on the other side as this is how our boundaries look like today okay and this is something which i absolutely love about metaphors that you can expand them so much so 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 and as a facilitator i keep the right to ask a couple of questions to learn a more learn more about their expression and i ask that you know um is this an opaque door or is this a glass door can you see if the boundary get if if it gets shut do you still get to witness is like no it's a very opaque door and my second question was is this a jammed door or is this a very smoothly moving sliding door because that's the two kind of things i knew about a sliding door there's one right in front of me right and um, they like here's the thing and he got full passionate about it and he's like here's the thing the door slides very smoothly but the problem is i am getting weaker and he's getting stronger and i had goosebumps because without saying so much he talked about how difficult it is getting for him to have a say on that boundary while he feels that the son has a lot of control on the same i love this popping but yeah that is that is my moment of understanding that okay this prompt did what it had to do and yeah, that's my time happy to ask answer questions whatever but yeah, that's that's the 
that's the anatomy 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 of the prompt yes sorry took me a while <laughs> any questions any thoughts one more boundary example hmm okay I think one that I remember, um, oh, oh, very, very, okay. I, I'll try to make this super, super short just because you asked for, yeah, even I, I love the slide number. This is my third best, um, my third favorite, not third best. Also, I'll be very honest. The Lego boundary was mine, but I love that I came up with it. So I pushed it there. I'll talk about one boundary that, uh, uh, because I was there, I was taking a session for Spotify that day on my company's hours expense. Like I was on my work day doing another, paid gig somewhere and I love that feeling, that freedom. So that was my Lego boundary, but just very quick example. This person gave an example of a tennis court as a relationship, as a boundary between them and their boss, um, which is um, that as long as the ball is in your court, you have all the freedom, but once it goes to them, it's with them and they get to choose it. And, and the ball was hence the task that they would collaborate on. And the fact that it starts with a handshake and it ends with a handshake. So while there may be a lot of things that may be exchanged, the relationship is still very healthy, like a competitive sport where you start and end with a handshake. And uh, things like um, that, I also understand that that person is senior. And so even when I walk into this match, I walk with an understanding that I'll get to learn. And uh, here is here is again how I extended the prompt. I was like. Uh, it's just a suggestion, which I usually try to do with a lot of people to extend the prompt. Then on some days you'll feel like, oh, my part of the court is much smaller than his part of the court. Right. So that's just how you can sometimes ex extend a prompt that's all like extend a visual that's already done. Um, so yeah, that's this about the prompts. We have a couple of minutes. I will just have a look at the agenda again, see full agenda. Okay. We are over by eight minutes. All right, I will have to see how we get it done. Uh, but okay, here's what I want you to do. I'll probably okay. Do do you folks want to uh, try doing one prompt? Do you want to do that DIY activity, or do you want to do something else? DIY. Okay, let's 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 keep it very quick. More than what I had probably planned for it. I think we can still. Uh, um, I'll stick around a little after the scheduled time just to answer a couple of questions. Uh, but yeah, just for you to be able to um, try it out in your own practice, um, think of a prompt or think of an intent that you would like to solve for. So if you're a facilitator who has clients, then probably from a client's point of view, or if you're a team lead or a team coach where you have your own intents in your own teams. Uh, think of a problem statement and a metaphor that can be the tool to talk about this. This doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to visualize it right away. This garage is to understand the prompt, not how would you express the prompt in it. Okay. So think of the intent, think of what kind of variety it needs, and then what could be an element that can be used to express that from a large audience. That's the working math.
you just start dropping it in the chat Right, superb. I'm seeing so many really, really good metaphors and so many good problems taken us to solve it. Thank you so much. Um, just to be respectful of time, and I want to do our closing ritual. Um, thank you so much for participating in this. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, uh, Anna, it would be. Uh, I, I'll just probably drop my. Um, LinkedIn and my Instagram, where I share a lot of my uh, art and metaphors, uh, so you could probably see that. And I'm happy to connect one on one if anybody would love to brainstorm together or something. Um, super, super, always excited to work with other facilitators. Um, here's a closing ritual which I love to do. I want all of you to unmute yourself for this one. Don't worry, I'll not make your horse again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Love the love the love popping up. All right. Uh, if everybody's on unmute, um, if if possible, I'd also love to see you all on camera for this one, if that's okay. But if not possible, I absolutely understand. I'll just give a moment for somebody who could switch their videos on. All right. Cool. Here's here's how I usually like to finish my sessions. Person, be it virtually. I want all of you to raise this hand. And say, good job. <laughs> well done. Yeah. And give yourself a hug. And thank you so much for showing. And that's my time. I will very, very quickly scout for my links on the internet and give it to you before I miss out connecting with all of you. Um, I almost want to do a checkout of, if this session were a metaphor, what would it be? Drop it in the chat if your brain works really fast and you kind of like something sparked for you. Yeah, you thank you so good. much. This was really, really fun, very soothing. I had a hectic day. Uh, 
and I feel so much more better now. So this was really great. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much. Really, really means a lot. There we go. Homemade plum cake, dessert. Yeah, there's a lot of sweets. There's a lot of sweetness in here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hot chocolate. <laughs> Yoo <-hoo! laughs> All the sweet things. Thanks everyone for joining uh, and for leaning into all the metaphors and the drawings and the laughing and the brewing and feeling like a kid again and just return from a park. Enjoy the rest of your day and hope to see you around very, very soon. Thank you, so um, thank you Harshay. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.